65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 95. She doesn't live here now. I do. Just a minute. Oh, uh, beat it, will you? I want to get dressed. Listen, I pay the rent for this room. So do I. Weekly. And in cash. Well, that's quite mysterious. Well, I talk to the doctor about it. He's the landlord, remember? Yeah, I remember. Dear Korczynski, when did you get back? Where's Anya? Where's she gone? She left here. Why? There seemed to be some pecuniary embarrassment. Please, no money. But, but that's not possible. I send them I send them money every place we stopped. For our home. Where's she gone? What's her address? Come on, tell me, you must know. All I know is she left here, owing me two weeks' rent. Yeah. 
You liar. That's not, that's not why she left, is it? I know you. And if I find out you have been... Be so good as to remove your hand from my jacket. Here you are, Miss Davis. Thank you. Look. I've been sending her money all the time. Now, if you send on my letters, you must know her address. Come on, put your cards on the table and tell me what you want. Don't take that tone with me. But if you're still so interested in this girl, perhaps you'd like to take care of her debts. So, you sell me her address? No, it's only what I'm owed. You can see the bills if you like. Four pounds for the rent, one pound ten for gas, a pound for electricity, various other smaller items. All right, say a fiver. Thank you. Well, I'm sorry about That's that. That's all right. Bye. Ronick, I want to give you a word of advice. And believe me, it is from a friend. Don't let your emotions run your life. Sometimes it isn't worth it. Gilly, go back to London. Go on, scram. I got a bomb. A bomb? Cowboys don't use bombs. Hey, get up! Give me Give it. Go on, clear it off. Stop it, stop it. Then you must never hit a lady. I'm not a lady. Give her back the bomb. Now clear off and leave her alone. Hey! Any of your kids know where... where's Landry's Court? What say, mister? Landry's Court? Never heard of it. It's somewhere here. Oh, Clannest Court. Ah. Gillian show you. She lives there. Thank you. You forgot something. Um, do you, <clears throat> do you know where that is? Oh, it's, um, Clannery's Court. Oh, that's where I live. Huh? It's that house there. Uh, thank you very much, mademoiselle.
Анечка, кохан не мой. Анечка, Анечка, найдрожь ты моя. Найдроша, найдроша ты моя, хоть ты ближе. Уезжала, что пшида? Не уезжала. Чекам, как нагаши неко. You're late, you bad girl, wherever have you been? Couldn't get served. Butcher's was full. You've been playing in the streets again. No, I haven't, Auntie. Honest, I came straight home. There was a fire in Davis Street. I only stopped a minute. Put the change on the table. There weren't no change. Oh, come on now, Gilly, none of that. He didn't give me none, Auntie. Little liar, you. What have you been up to now? Nothing, Auntie. Uh, don't touch that. It's Mrs. Potter. Well, I'm waiting. Sausages, my girl, are one and nine and a half. I gave you two and six. Now, what did you do with that ninepence? I dropped it. It wasn't my fault. A great big lady with a basket bumped into me, knocked it clean out of my hand. Mm, fell down the drain, I dare say. Yes. That's what took me so long, hunting for it. Butcher, give you this. Steal from your own, would you? All my life is spent in struggling to scrimp together a few pennies to bring you up decent, and this is how you repay me. A thief at your age. End up in jail, that's what'll happen to you, mark my words. You're old enough to know right from wrong by now, I should hope, so let's have the truth for once. Why did you do it? They wouldn't let me play with them. They all got proper cat pistols. And Gwyneth, she got a new cowboy outfit for her birthday. I'm sure I don't know what next. Little girls wanting to play with guns and bombs and dressing up like gangsters. Here. Thanks, Auntie. And take these pants down to Mr. Williams for me and tell him it's two shillings. Mm -hmm. Be careful now. Devil. Mind what you're doing with those trousers now. It's too bob, Auntie says. Where's your manners? Didn't no one ever tell you to say please? Sorry, Mrs. Williams. Tell her I'll pay her next week. Okay. Well, what is it? No one ever tell you to say thank you. Some people got no manners. <laughs> oh, you wicked girl. You've made Mr. Williams cut himself now, you have. Oh, dear. Cut yourself bad. Cut his bleeding lead off. Oh, you, you wait for me to down on you. It'll be your backside will be cut then. Ale Aniu, ja ciebie kocham. Nie spodzianka, nie spodzianka. Branek, proszę ciebie, idź sobie teraz. Ale Aniu, ja ciebie kocham. Ja ciebie kocham. Branek, proszę ciebie, idź sobie teraz. Ja chcę ciebie, żebyś została moją żoną. And I came here to ask you to marry me. Can't you understand? Must you make me say it? I don't want to see you. I don't want you. I don't want you. Ania. Look, Ania, I... I'm sorry I'm away so long. It's the ships. Well, I, I don't write so good. You, you know I don't write. But you got the money, didn't you? Came regular, didn't it? Regular? Oh, yes. Regular like you pay a cook. I'm glad you are so grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you! Is that grateful enough? Just because you helped me once, is that a life sentence? I'm not an animal for a little boy to keep in a cage. I'm a woman. A woman with a heart and a body which is my own to give how I like when I like. 
I'd rather be back in that bloody camp than have this year again. This waiting, waiting, never knowing. Anetchka, I'm, I'm finished with this scene. I tell you, really, I, it's, it's all over. I never go back to the sea. I'm, I'm staying here with you now. I promise you. I swear it. And we are going to get married. Married, you hear? Married? Married would be terrible. Worse. Plenty of love for a few days, all happy, smiling. Then you'd see a ship. You can't help it. It's a madness. The sea gets in here. You've got a man, haven't you? You've got another one, haven't you? Haven't you? Yes! yes Who is I it? Have. Who is it? You tell me, you tell me! Not a sailor! I tell you that! Not a dirty sailor! He's a wonderful man, wonderful! He's a gentleman! A gentleman! <laughs> He's... <laughs> You bitch! You bitch, bitch! Bitch! Yes, bitch! That's exactly it. Well, your little bitch has had enough of crawling on her stomach, crawling when you whistle, crawling up the pipsie You call it love, I call it something else. I've watched you. You're thinking only one thing. What a wonderful, strong man is Bronislaw Koschinski. Little sailor boy shouldn't have women to play with. Better go out and sleep with the sea. Now get out, get out, 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 get out. Tikurva, tikurva, tisukoti, tishmerzanta prostigutko. Vinosha, Vinosha, von. This one catch you. This one catch you. This one catch you. This one. Catch you. This one... <laughs> over those caps. Do you hear what I'm saying? I want those caps of yours. Come on, come on, I'm waiting. These are confiscated. Any more trouble from you and you'll go to jail. Stupid little... Why don't you look where you're going? Anya? Anya! Got my two shillings? Two shillings? Mr. Williams' trousers. Oh, she wouldn't pay. Said she'd pay next week.
Look, Gilly, I know when something's wrong. What is it now? It says O. Williams. He picked my bomb. <laughs> is that all? All right, all right, I'm coming. Hello? Yes? Yes? Who? Oh, I think she's out. Can I take a message? Oh, all right then. Hang on. What is it? What's the matter to you? Something awful has happened to the woman upstairs. I think she's dead. She's been murdered or something. Oh. oh. In a terrible state. Well, you stay there. I'll try and catch Georgia. Oh, no, no, no. I'll come with you. I'm Superintendent Graham. Can I come in, please? Yes. You're Mrs. Phillips, aren't you? Yes. Well, I'm in charge of this case upstairs, Mrs. Phillips. I uh, understand that you knew Miss Aluba pretty well, didn't you? I wouldn't say I knew her at all beyond saying good morning. Well, would you have noticed perhaps whether she had many visitors? I've more to do with my time than spend it nosing into other people's affairs. I'm sure. I just thought as a neighbour you... you might know something about her habits. I'm not one to speak ill of the dead. Whatever she's done wrong, she's paid for now. It's not for us to judge, is it? Did you go out at all this morning? No. Well, somewhere around 12.30, a gun was fired upstairs. Did you hear it? I may have done. There were several bangs. I thought it was Gilly with her toy. Toy? What toy? Where's that thing, Gilly? I've got it, Auntie. I told you. I've got it here, sir. If you put two or three claps at once in that, it makes a noise exactly like a revolver shot. Gilly, come here a minute, will you? Were you playing with this this morning? I'll say she was, sir, until I took it off her. After giving her due warning... Thank you, Williams. There was no chance for anybody to hear a shot. With all that racket going on... Sit down, Gilly. Sit down. Sit down. Now, don't be nervous. I want to ask you a few simple questions. Superintendent, there's a wedding at St. Mary's and Gilly's in the choir. It's late already. I won't be a moment, Mrs. Phillips. Now, Gilly. In all this house full of people, there's only one person who could have known for certain the difference between the noise of this little lead bomb exploding and the shots that were fired. Now, that, uh, that person's you, isn't it, Giddy? Yes. Uh-huh. Did you hear a shot? Yes. How many shots did you hear? Several. Mm hmm Where were you at the time? On the stairs. Mm -hmm. Did you see anybody come out of number four, the, the Polish lady's flat? Who was it? A man? Mm. And what did he look like? Can you, uh, can you describe him to us? Now, come on, speak up. And don't go telling the superintendent none of your stories or you'll find yourself in real trouble. Proper little liar she is. I uh, thank you, Mr. Williams, not to call the child names. Now then, Gilly, you were going to try and tell us what the man looked like. He just looked ordinary. Was he, uh, dark or fair? Fairish. Fat? Fat? Well, fatish. Was he tall or short? Tallish. How was he dressed? 
Just an ordinary sort of clothes. A bit like yours. Did he have a hat? Mm. Then how do you know he was fair? He had in his hand. In the house, you see. Do you think you'd recognize him if you saw him again? Yes, I think so. Gracious, look at the time. She should be in the church by now. Let's see now. He was fattish, fairish, tallish, ordinaryish. Thank you very much, Killy. You've been a great help. Gilly, come here and let me comb your hair. There's no time to change or anything. You'll have to go as you are. There, now, run along. with his favor look upon you and so fill you with all spiritual benediction and grace that ye may so live together in this life that in the world to come ye may have life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who at the beginning did create our first parents, Adam and Eve, and did sanctify and join them together in marriage, pour upon you the riches of his grace, sanctify and bless you, that ye may please him both in body and soul, and live together in holy love until your lives end. Amen.
what have you to say for yourself? Fourteen and a half minutes late. It wasn't my fault, Mr. Seymour. I'd help the police with the murder. Stop telling lies in God's house. But Mr. Seymour, sir... Now, I'm not warning you again. And, and you disgrace the whole choir breaking down in your solo. Now, I don't know what I'm to say to the vicar. Next time you misbehave during a service will be the last. Now, you understand? Yes, sir. Now, are you listening? Yes, sir. Oh, Ida, I want to have a chat with you about next Sunday service. Uh, I was wondering, after the anthem... That gun. Don't move. I've got you covered. It's loaded. Coming in here and I'll shoot. I mean it. Put your hands up. Go on. Go on. Pull them up. Now turn round. Now what? What's the big idea? Keep me here all night? You're gonna get pretty tired, I think. Oh, no, I won't. My dad's waiting for me. When I don't come back, he'll send the police. Then I'll take you away. But what have I done? I know what you've done. I saw you. What are you talking about? I was watching through the letterbox. <laughs> You tell me what you saw. Why were you spying on me, huh? I wasn't. I was only looking. I didn't mean to spy. Whom did you tell? Whom? No one. No one honest. Did you tell your father? No, not even the police. What did you tell them? I had to tell them I saw a man, but I never said it was you. Truly, I didn't. 
What do you mean you never said it was me? I said he was a different man, not like you. Why did you tell him wrong? Why? Huh? I wanted that gun. Anyone, anyone else know you've got it? Of course, and how could they? Please, can I go home now? Please, can I go home now? No. What are you going to do? You want to get away from here? Quick, won't you? Get a boat, maybe. Go someplace a long way off. There's lots of boats go from Cardiff. Then once you're away, you wouldn't need to bother about me. You've got the gun. You could shoot your way out. You could. I've seen him do it. Saw a man once. Shot a girl. And the cops were all around the house. And they couldn't guess at him, because he had a Tommy gun, which he kept firing through the window at him. Holy Mother, what I did, I, I didn't know I'm, I'm doing. Why did you do it? You know, shoot her. I, I got angry. She wants you anymore. She'd got someone else. A gentleman. Got more cash, I suppose. I know. It's that man with the car. Horrid man. Always hanging around our place. You should have shot him instead. I didn't want to shoot anyone. But it was his fault. And I'll tell you another thing. He's got another wife as well. All my life I've been at sea. All my life I've been trying to get away from the sea. But it never worked out. What's wrong with the sea? I love it. Why not tell them? The whole thing. Nobody in our street will blame you. They said she gave our place a bad name. Anyway, Auntie says it's better to be dead if you're so wicked. Shut up, will you? I dried up in my solo. Nice bit, too. Yay, the
terrible voice. How did they ever let you into the choir? Cool. I'm starving. Hear it rumbling? What are you going to do? Oh, find a ship. Back to the sea. I always wanted to go to sea. Did you? Hmm. Huh. And would you like to work on a ship? Huh? Yeah, could I? Of course. Would you, would you take me? Well, uh, I might. Would you? Then we could go around the world together. And you forget all this. All right, I'll take you. Honestly? But there'll be no time to go home. You've got to stay with me. It doesn't matter. But you do promise to take me with you. Well, sure, I promise. Yeah, I promise. Mm. But wait a minute, what will your father say? I haven't got a father. I live with my auntie. But she doesn't care. Sometimes I stay out all night. You tell a lot of lies, don't you? Me? All right, let's go and find a ship right away. Huh? I found it in his trouser pocket when I was turning out his things. And I thought I'd better tell you, sir. Yes, good. Come on, old chap. Rub that sleeve out of your eyes now. Who are you? I'm a policeman. Sorry to wake you up, but this is rather important. Where'd you get this? Didn't do anything wrong. Fair trade. Swapped it with Gilly Evans in church. Ask Mrs. Phillips to come here. She's out in the hall. You swapped it, eh? It was a good swap? Mm, not bad. Some chalk and a dinky. Mm-hmm, not bad. I wonder where Gilly got it. Didn't ask her. Ah, hello, Mrs. Phillips. Gilly's still up. She's not in yet. Oh, not in. It's a bit late, isn't it? Well, yes, I suppose so. She's always out late and causing trouble. She's got no sense of right nor wrong. Probably still playing with a new gun. Gilly hasn't got a gun. Charles, my bullet came from her gun. Oh, he's half asleep. He's talking nonsense. What sort of gun was it? It was a lovely gun. A real gun. Well, what are we going to do? You've got to find her. We'll find her, Mrs. Phillips. It'll be all right. It'll be all right, he says. A fat lot of good the police are. We've got one in the house and a murder's done right under his nose and now here's a child got hold of a gun and they don't even know where she is. We'll find her. this program to bring you an urgent police message. Missing from her home, Landry's Court, Butte Town, is Gillian Evans, aged 11. Fair hair, wearing dark blue jersey and jeans. She was last seen in St. Mary's Church, Butte Street, at approximately 2.30pm today. She is in possession of a revolver which is believed to be loaded. 
Will anyone who has seen this girl or has knowledge of her whereabouts please communicate with Cardiff City Police? No, you got the gun. I just heard it on the radio. Every cop in this town is after you. Every cop. How the hell do they know it? It must be Dad Perry. I swapped him a bullet. He must have told on me. Who is that? Who is he? Just a friend of mine. Why did you lie? Lie to me. Why do you always lie? I wouldn't if you didn't shout at me. You frightened me. It's then I'll tell lies. I'm sorry. That's... It's all right. But if you, if you want me to help you, no more lies, huh? Friends don't lie to each other. I never do lie to my friends. Got a ship? Huh? Yeah, sure, sure. We're lucky. Are we gonna board her now? No, no, we, we, we can't tonight. It, it sails tomorrow. We have, we have to hide up somewhere. Tonight. I know a wonderful place to hide. Quite near here. Up in the hills. We went there for last year's outing. I lost me Wellington in the stream. better man won. Horses was beaten in the fifth round by a terrific blow over the heart which seemed to paralyse him. Hello. Good evening, Mr. Barclay. Wait a minute, don't tell me. I never forget a face. It's the superintendent himself, isn't it? Well, well, long time no see. What can I do for you? Well, I need a drink. I'm trying to 35 minute non-stop spiel. It's hell. Can I join me? Yeah, come. Well, you take in the fight. Afraid that's the finish of our Ben. Sad hearts in Tiger Bay tonight. Mr. Barclay, I'm here to make some inquiries about a Miss Haluba. Oh, yes? When did you see her last? Oh, that's an old sort of a question, isn't it? She was found dead in her flat this afternoon. What? Oh, good heavens, how awful. Well, what was it, suicide? 
You were going to tell me when you saw her last. Well, honestly, old boy, I can't be expected to remember that offhand. So you didn't see her today? Today? Hardly <laughs> had time to breathe. Had a hell of a morning at the office, and I just managed to snatch a bite of lunch with old Charlie Adams at the Royal, and then this. Well, what is all this mystery, old boy? Surely I'm a well-known enough character around this town to be treated like a responsible citizen. Mr. Bartley, at this stage, even the most responsible citizens sometimes have to be kept in the dark. Yeah, it's all right, but it's only if I knew what was going on, I might be able to help. Good night. Thank you, Mr. Barclay. You've already been most helpful. Wstawaj, malutka. Wstawaj, malutka. Wstawaj, malutka. What's that? It's Polish. It means get up. Now, get up. It's time for breakfast. Huh? All four shots were fired from that gun, sir. Here's the receipt for it. Hmm. Looks as though you may be right. We'd better have another chat with our Mr. Barclay. I want to see the super, Graham, isn't it? Yes, sir. I won't give you a moment. What's the game, Christine? Bringing us this load of junk. But I've just told you. Oh, don't give me that stuff. No, you keep it for the paying customers. Now, look, you've whipped something out of this. Now, what was it? That's typical. I just try to help. And he calls me a bloody thief. Oh, shut up. It's too early. All right, Christine, push off. Oh, and on the Chief Constable's behalf, thank you for your cooperation. Here. Oh, I've got a Mr. Um, Barclay. A uh, Barclay to see you, sir. Send him in. Barclay. Very obliging of him. Mr. Barclay, sir. Come in, Mr. Barclay. Good morning. Good morning. Sit down, please. Thank you. Cup of tea? No, thank you. Coffee? No. Well, uh, how about a cigarette? Yes, thank you. Now then, what can we do for you? Well, I've got something to tell you. I think I may be able to help you in this murder case, and your haluba. I think you ought to know I left a gun in her flat. That the one? Go on, pick it up, it's not loaded. Now, just have a good look at it and tell me if it's yours, will you? Yes. Yes, it is. Thank you. Now, on your original application for a firearm certificate, you stated that you needed the revolver for amateur theatrical productions. Was that why it was in Mr. Luba's room? Of course not. Then would you mind telling me how the gun came to be there? Well, it's not very easy to. I mean, if the, if the newspapers got hold of it, you know what they are, they'd tear me to pieces. You know, I, I'm a married man. A job like mine, I'd be finished. You see, old boy, 
My relations with Andrew. Mr. Barclay, we are aware of the uh, situation. Like naked savages with knives in their mouths. <clears throat> Cannibals? Man eaters! There I stood, unarmed, alone. <clears throat> and I faced them with nothing but my bare fist. And they come closer and closer. And suddenly, they rushed at me. In front of them, a big giant. Twice as big as me. Ha, he was laughing at me. <laughs> but I hit him right into his grinning teeth. Smash and bash. And another, and another, and another, and another. And, ah, oh, oh. Suddenly, a pain in my arm, like fire. Oh. I saw the river red with blood. And then I don't remember no more. Come on, what happened then? Uh, I woke up, days later, uh, miles away. Oh, a missionary was dressing my arm. the gun. Well, she kept on pestering me, telling me there was some man she was frightened of and needed protection. You know how women are, they go on and on. Poor kid, she really meant it for once. She was a foreigner, you know, Polish. She was always imagining things, stupid things. Well, living in that district, in the end, just for peace, I lent it to her. Damn silly thing to have done, I realize that now. Yes, I agree. I regret it terribly, of course. Yes, it was dangerous and illegal, as well as foolish. However, I appreciate your frankness in coming to tell me about it. Well, naturally, in the circumstances, I want to do all I can to help. Mm, thank you, I'm sure you felt very upset when you heard about it. You didn't say that you hadn't seen Mr. Luba yesterday, didn't you? Yes, that's what I said. It's all right, isn't it? Then what was your car doing outside her flat lunchtime yesterday? Ah, damn silly. You know I forgot. Mr. Barclay, you are to understand that you need not say anything unless you wish to do so. But that anything you do say will be taken down and may be used in evidence. Do you mean I'm under arrest? No. No, you're free to come and go as you please. For the moment. Thank you. But if you have anything else to say, I think I'd get it off my chest now. Okay. Look now, this is the sober, solemn truth. I did see Anya yesterday. We were going to have lunch together. When I saw she was dead, I panicked and ran away. I was terribly upset. Yes, I know. I know I should have told you, but well, I thought I could get away with it. 
Yeah, that was nothing to do with me. People often do that sort of thing. Human weakness, if you like. Anyway, there was nothing I could do to help. Nothing at all. Yes. There's another version to fit those facts, Mr. Barclay. That you wanted to break off relations with her and that she threatened to become troublesome. You've just admitted a scandal will ruin you. That you opened the drawer, took out your own revolver, and that you then shot her with it. But that's not true. I mean, I... It's completely untrue. Sure. Come on, Tony, come on! Don't just stand there. Oh, Lady of Fig, come on! Oh, what's that Polish fat pony? Time to go, Brolic. Yes. Afraid so. But I won't be gone long. Just want to fix up our paper, sir. No. The police will pick you up soon as we got into town. Well, let's wait till dark then. Both get on together. You're scared to be left alone? I'm not scared. Go on then, go. I don't want you. Hey, cheer up, hmm? You're not coming back, are you? see you again. Maybe. Someday. It, it doesn't matter, though. Wherever I am, you're still my friend. Uh, look, you stay here until uh, seven o'clock. And I'll be clear by then. Okay. Bronislav Kuch... Kuczynski. Kuczynski. No. Kuczynski. But... But how will I know when it's seven o'clock? Come on. You know it. Well, what about you? Supposing you can't get on the ship? Don't worry about me. I'll be all right. Once I'm on board and outside the three-mile limit, I'm safe. What's the three-mile limit? No. You see, when a, when a foreign ship is three miles from the shore, no one can touch you, no matter what you have done. Now, off you go. I'm tired. Go on. Go on. James? No, Max. No. I never met such an anonymous bloke. He may be anonymous, but his girlfriend's in the news. Here's my ticket for promotion, Sarge. You want to be a detective? The bag was found outside Anya Haluba's old address at Loudon Square, sir. All right, Thomas. Well, there may be something in it. I suppose we'd better follow it up. 
But don't let Mr. Barclay off the hook. <laughs> Did you see my bag? Sure, I found the bag. I gave it to the police. Open the door. Hey! This is important, Christine. Have you ever seen that man before? Why, that's the Polish girl. The girl that was me. Yes, but who's the man? That photograph was found in the bag you brought in. Come on, you know who it is, don't you? No. No, I don't know. You've not got a very good reputation, Christine. If I find out that you're lying to me... I told you I don't know him. I think you do. That bag was left here yesterday. But I told you I didn't see who left it. Perhaps someone else in the house did, but I didn't. Now, will you please stop bothering me? Quick, they've gone upstairs. Oh, it's no good. I'm done for. All my papers went in that bag. No papers, no ship. I'm, I'm... I'm really done for if I don't get the ship. Things a heck of a weight. I've got no feeling left in my fingers. Hello. What's the matter with you? Have you hurt yourself? I wonder who she came with. Is she one of the Thomas kids? No, she wasn't on the coach. Oh, probably a local girl. I. Mind if I borrow your paper, mate? Oh. Hey, look at that. Well, what about it? Well, that's her. That kid. That kid we just saw. No. I tell you it is. I tell you it isn't. Like the pet? How much? Ten bob. Done. Right, come on then.
tell you, it is her. Eyes, right, you know. Look. name is on the list. That makes it look very official, but that doesn't guarantee you'll get the job, mind you. That's up to the captain. Have you, uh... How much? One, two, three, four, five. Thanks. Now, if I might make a suggestion, Quite off the record, you understand. Compre? Hmm. She's in the Queen Alexander dock, number five berth. So you deliberately lied to me then? Yes. Why did you lie to me, Gilly? Why? Don't know. I wouldn't have you for a friend, Gilly. I want to be able to trust my friends. I couldn't trust you. I'd never know whether you were telling me the truth or not. I'd always know you were thinking about Gilly Evans first. And then I'd, I'd say to myself, not worth bothering about. Look at me. Look at me! I want the truth now, Gilly. Am I going to get it? Now, don't say yes, don't say yes, unless you mean it. Yes. Good. So you saw a man hide the gun on top of the gas meter, and then you took it away and hid it yourself, right? Yes. She is telling the truth, sir. I always know when Gilly's lying. Thank you, Mrs. Phillips, but please try not to interrupt. Now, Gilly, what happened then? Then I took it with me to the church, for safety. I see. Well, why didn't you come straight home after the service? A man frightened me. A man? What man? I don't know. Well, had you seen him before? I don't know. You don't know? Had you or hadn't you seen him before? Think, Gilly, think. Well... I think he was the man I told you about on the stairs. You think only, you're not sure. It was dark. Well, how did he frighten you? He chased me. What did you do? I ran away. Why was he chasing you? Well, because of the gun, I suppose. I thought if he caught me, he might shoot me with it. So I threw it away. Where? Over a wall near a pub. Why are you breaking your contract with the British Marine Pool? Why are you breaking it? Personal reasons. Police after you or something? I hope not. All right, we take you. Contract for a single passage. Sign up at Caracas, okay? Yes, sir. Now remember, we sell on this side. Now report to the purser. wanted me. And I was scared to go home in case I got into trouble. Where'd you hear that? Look at me, Gilly, look at me. On the wireless. What wireless? The ticket man's. The one by the ferry. Well, what did you do then? I ran away up into the hills. And I stayed there alone all night? Yes. Weren't you frightened? Well, yes, I was. Hmm. Well, I know I would have been. I suppose you'd, um, recognize this man if you saw him again, wouldn't you? Suppose I might. Hmm. Well, let's go and see, shall we? 
Bridges. Yes, sir. We're coming out now. Straight away, sir? Yes, right away. Right, sir. Would you mind waiting here, Mrs. Fettis, please? Come on, Gilly. Come on, come on. Go on, Gilly, do as you're told. Mr. Bridges, this is the young lady who's been so helpful to us. Mr. Bridges will explain everything, Gilly. It's quite simple. Take care of her, will you? Come along now, Gilly. Now, there's nothing to be afraid of. I want you to take your time over this. Start from this end. This man that was living with her, can you describe him? It's a long time ago now. Is this the chap? The face seems familiar. He was here yesterday. You seem to know more about him than I do. What was his name? Ah, there ought to be a medicine for bad memories. There is, quite a simple one. May I see your records, please? Thanks. Now then, Gilly, where have you seen this man before? Where I live, Clannis Court. Uh-huh. When? Yes? I've identified the man in the photograph. Well? He's a sailor, name of Bronislav Korczynski. Bronislav Kor... what? Korczynski. Korczynski. Right, I'm busy now, later. Now, Gilly, about this man. When did you see him? I saw him yesterday. Yeah, go on. He's the man. The man I saw come out of the flat. Are you positive, Gilly? Now you're absolutely certain. Yes. He's the man who shot her. I saw him. No, no, wait a minute. Now you can't say that. You you could have heard the shot, but you but you couldn't have seen it. Now, is he the man you saw hide the revolver? Yes. But he did shoot her. I know he did. I saw him. I saw him through the letterbox. The letterbox? But, Gilly, how could you? I did. I tell you, I did. I'll show you if you don't believe me. Well, why didn't you tell me this before? Uh, I was scared. I didn't know you caught him. All right, Gilly. You shall show us what you saw through that letterbox. And then he took hold of her and shook her and shook her and shook her. And then she pulled away and said something that made him even more angry. So angry that he closed the table and Get up, Gilly, get up. And then he started coming out of the room, 
So I ran away up the stairs and hid. Scared he'd catch me. That's the truth. Honest. That's the real truth. Yes, Kelly. I believe you. But how did you know it was Polish? <laughs> Sit down. Look, it's down here in writing. You said they was talking Polish. Well, she was Polish, wasn't she? Everyone in our place knew that. But how did you know it was Polish? I just guessed. She was talking in a foreign language. All right, and the man was talking in a foreign language too. You said they. I, I only said she. I didn't hear it. Gilly. I didn't, I didn't. I'm You're sure lying again, Gilly. You're lying again. Did you hear the man's name? No. Bronislav Korczynski? No. Have you ever heard the name Bronislav Korczynski? No. Yes, Korczynski. K-O-R-C-H-I-N-S-K-Y. Presumably, I have a list of people who are employed through the marine pool. You sure this one has a British passport? Well, look it up and see. Bronislav Kuczynski, AB First Class, signed off Northern Star yesterday. Could he have signed on with any other ship? Not with us. As far as we know, he's still ashore. Thanks. Good luck to you. Yes, there she is. Did you take on any crew here? Yes. There, Kaczynski. I want to stop that ship. Stop her? You can't stop her now. She's dropped a pilot. You might catch her up, Barry, if you're quick. Thanks. She must be about here, clear of Penarth Head. So that means she'll only be inside the three-mile limit for about another half an hour. We can make Barry in ten minutes by the coast road. Sergeant White, have a pilot boat waiting at Barry. Bring the girl. Where are we going? You'll see. No, straight on, stick to the coast road. That looks like the Paloma, sir.
Hurt yourself? Yes, yes, I have. No bones, bro. Yes, yes, I think so. My leg. Bad luck. We'll put it in splints on the boat. but she's not answering. Well, can we catch her in this? Not a hope. Well, keep signaling. We've got to stop her in the limit, right? <laughs> about this, Captain. But you got a man on board I got to talk to. He's a member of your crew. Korczynski. Bronislav Korczynski. Korczynski? Uh, sí, Capitan. Este es Korczynski. Yo compromiso de mío. Llame Korczynski a mi camarote. Sí, Capitan. Korczynski! The Captain wants to see you. Cigarillos? No, thank you, Captain. Adelante. Adelante, adelante. Bueno, explíquese. You are Bronislav Korczynski? Yes, sir. That, that is my name. Come with me. And I suggest that you were the man in Miss Haluba's flat yesterday, that you had a violent quarrel during the course of which she fired a shot, that you then seized the gun and killed her with it. And I told you I wasn't there. So you still maintain you did not see Miss Haluba yesterday? Yes, I do. This is the man you've been telling us about, isn't it? No. Angeli, look at him. Look at him. Look at him carefully now. Now take your time. You... you only got a glimpse of him through the letterbox, you know. And you told us yourself it was dark on the landing. Now, is this... Anything like the man you saw coming out of the flat? No. I've never seen it before in my life. Se terminó. The captain asks if you are satisfied. No. Yo lo siento, yo lo siento. No puedo demorar más la salida de mi buque. Tendré que informar de todo el incidente al consul de Londres. The captain says he cannot hold back the ship any longer. Each minute costs the company thousands of dollars. And will you please tell the captain... The captain that... says he will report the whole incident to the consul in London. Tell him, I'm up. one more minute. Dice que se quedará un minuto más. 
Now, don't be frightened, Gilly. He can't hurt you now. I'm not frightened. I don't know him. I've never seen him before. You must tell the truth, Gilly. It is the truth. Why should I lie about him? The truth, Gilly, the truth. Gilly, look at me. Now, in this world, we, we sometimes have to tell little lies to help other people, our, our friends. Now, we call this being loyal. Now, everybody admires and loves somebody who's loyal. But sometimes it, it's very wrong to tell even little lies if, if by doing so we, we help somebody bad to go free. Now, that, that's not being loyal, Gilly. That, that's being very wicked. Now, you, you don't want to be wicked, do you? Now, this is the one moment that you must tell me the truth. The truth, Gilly. This is the man you saw come out of the flat. Isn't it? Isn't it? Look at him, Gilly. Look at him. This is the man you saw come out of the flat. Isn't it, Gilly? Isn't it? Isn't it? No. I've never seen it before in my life. Dígale que vuelva a su trabajo. All right, you can go. Wait a minute. What is it now? What else do you want? The girl said no, she doesn't know me. Don't you listen? She said no! Isn't that enough? Isn't that enough? No, it isn't. I haven't got the evidence I need at the moment, but I can hold you and I'm going to. Bronislav Korczynski, I arrest you for the willful murder of Anya Haluba. You need not say anything unless you no. wish to do so. No. Anything you do say... No, you can't! I didn't see him do anything! I didn't see him ...will be anything. taken down I and used in evidence. I never seen him! I didn't! I never seen him! Never! Yes, Mr. Nina! Get I out of here! Not. I didn't! I Will you please thank the captain for his courtesy? Tell him I regret the necessity of removing all of his crew, but he will understand I have no alternative. Thank you, Superintendent. I understand that you have caused me a great deal of trouble. Qual est la position? Come on. Koshinsky! Just a moment, please. You cannot take this man off my ship. He's outside British jurisdiction. I'm afraid I can. We're still within the three-mile limit. Evidently, Superintendent, you do not know about drift and tide and wind. This is my navigator's report. Our exact position is just beyond your three-mile limit. Look for yourself. Why should I believe this? Because you have no alternative. And besides, my navigator is not in the habit of giving false information. You are powerless. Your orders mean nothing on the ship. Your warrant is a mere scrap of paper. All right. Supposing this report is correct, you could still let me take this man off your ship. Yes, I could, but I will not. Why not? That's my business. Koczynski, go back to your duties. I'm sorry, Superintendent, but I cannot have any further argument. I must ask you to get off my ship at once. We have already lost too much time. Thank you, Captain. I hope one day we'll be able to repay your cooperation. 
Goodbye, Superintendent. You really had nothing to hold him on, you know, sir? Nothing at all, except the girl. Where is she? Gilly? Gilly! 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 Get that girl off the ship. I want to get underway. Sorry, sir. She slipped away. I'll find her. But don't find her too soon. Right, sir. We've wasted enough time. Where is the girl? We'll find her. Leave this to us. Come on, the frightener. Get back to the launch. Get me a radio fix. I want to know our exact position. I think the captain and the navigator are cooking the bloody books. I'm taking Korchinski off this ship. Right, sir. You can't. Don't you see? You, you, you can only help me. Help me, Gilly. By getting off here. By getting off this ship. Every minute. Every second you are here. It's bad for me. Very, very, very bad. You must trust me, Gilly. Trust me. Please. Go. Go now. Dan, come with you. No, no, no. You must get off this boat immediately. You understand? At once. But, but we're, we're past the three mile limit. The captain said so. We're safe. You could take me with you. But I don't want you. I don't want you. I don't want you. I don't want you. Gilly, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean to say that. I'm afraid the captain's right, sir. We're just outside the three-mile limit.
nice hot drink, eh? Then we will get you into some nice dry clothes. Get some brandy! Yes, I have. I'm a very brave man. 